Yeah, so Andrew was uh, working on watch faces. You know, most of the and he's sorry, but most of the time I wonder what he's doing, like tinkering around <laughs> with stuff. It's like there's an end goal to this tinkering. <laughs> there is. There's a sweet goal. The ends justify the means. <laughs> cool. He's he's got an infatuation with watches. What's All right, your, we got the noodles back. With? Noodles are back cool. in the house. Shady's back. Um, I don't think Buddy got that reference. If it's music or yeah. movies. Buddy doesn't get any but did you reference. not catch my out for a rip just right over the head reference Shannon during oh. editing? Right? Oh my god, I love out for a rip. Oh yeah, I did. I was like half ass paying attention to that one. <laughs> you, you don't have to listen to it. I listened to it twice. <laughs> I do, but I don't listen to them. Anyways, um, so we got Olivia, Hi. aka Noodles. Do not make me tell the noodle story again. It's not noodle happening. arms. Yeah, okay. You can. <laughs> Oh, we're <laughs> editing gonna, that one. I forgot I'm not supposed You're to say busted. that. Don't Shit, follow it up with bad. another one. <laughs> we haven't had the F word. This is live. We haven't had this F word used so much in our shop and since Matt's been here. Like, if Matt was still here, it would be like, we'd probably have to separate Olivia and Matt at the same time because the communication would probably be really bad. <laughs> Anyways, so we yep. got Jason. What's your nickname? Uh, Redbeard, Ginger. Cinnamon Bear, the Doobie. That's what we call you. Cinnamon yeah. bear. Oh yeah, cinnamon, cinnamon bear. bear. Did your well, wife call you that? Did you she catch yourself? <laughs> I almost did. I'm sorry. I'm not used to being on my best behavior. <laughs> it doesn't exist. <laughs> yeah, cinnamon oh. bears. Whatever. That's my favorite around the um, a bunch of my. I don't even want to know. I think <laughs> you're. That's your private shit right there, Jason. There, there's a story that, that would be podcast worthy <laughs> for that. That is still G rated, probably, but not for today. <laughs> Probably. I'll I'm tell surprised. Later. Oh, Shannon. Yep. The race car driver. The dirty banana mm-hmm. pilot. Maybe I come up with yeah. Ricky Bobby. <laughs> that is my favorite movie. And we got Crazy Andy. Yeah. They're here to tell us a story about. Oh, we were started working on Merino Wool, and everybody except me was like, "Andrew's got to tell a story." He wrote an article about Merino Wool. It, not just an yep. article. Andrew laid out like the <laughs> it's history. Like an essay. <laughs> This is a lesson on Merino wool. I hope you guys are ready to learn about Merino wool because uh, we're quite hard on this. Quite hard. <laughs> so, so we just covered some Merino wool shirts, and 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 uh, we'll talk about them a little bit. But we're gonna we're doing a test to see number one. Like I I've, I've been hunting with Merino for a little bit. I like it, and so we were like, I wonder if we could get this for our customers and and make our own. Gosh, Sadie's climbing up on me. Sadie is his dog Um, for anybody listening. (laughs) She is the sweetest little puppy ever. Mm -hmm. I adore her. Anyway, so so we got some Merino and and Andrew, why don't you take us a little history trip on the Merino? Okay. I'm just going to read directly from my article. Um, (laughs) This isn't uh, history of Merino. Crazy Andy's writing. Hey, my writing is to be taken seriously. Like this first line, merino wool is the Cadillac of fabrics when it comes to clothing designed for the outdoors, especially when contrasted with a material like cotton. From a historical perspective, it can be closely compared to silk. Merino wool was actually established in Spain's Iberian Peninsula during the 12th century, and for over 600 years, it was strictly a Spanish material. Selling the breed of sheep outside the country was against royal Spanish law, and much like silk in ancient China, anyone who shared secrets about the fiber or sold it without royal permission risked the death penalty. And again like silk, if you wear a garment made from merino, you can feel the luxury. Due to its soft feel yet impeccable resistance to the elements, it's not hard to see why the Spanish were so protective of their sheep and didn't formally export royal merino wool elsewhere until the late 1700s. In fact, it wasn't until Charles IV of Spain formally gifted a flock to his cousin, the King of Saxony, that the merino monopoly ended and the wool finally found its way out of Spain. Selective breeding of the many different uh, types of sheep by shepherds in France, South Africa, and the American colonies and Australia created the different types of sophisticated and distinct merino wool we know today. While merino sheep were traditionally domesticated and bred in Spain, they originally hailed from the Atlas Mountains of Morocco. Flocks of wild sheep would normally have to endure rapidly changing conditions, ranging from negative 5 to 95 degrees Fahrenheit. Thus, okay, they I'm getting bored already. I knew you were. I was about to say, you looked bored over there. It was really good, Andrew, and then it went south on us. I was, you know, I was watching it's, my dog. It's okay, it's a little dry. If you want to hear the rest of Crazy Andy's writing, it's it's available on the W Ambassador <laughs> blog. If you have a larger attention span than Buddy <laughs> and would like to enjoy my article. We will 
We'll be sure to link it in the podcast up on Facebook. Can you Facebook. give me the short version of that? It's a that is it's a very version. special <laughs> wool because it's good. Of it's wool, moisture man. wicking and it's so insulation. Jason, you guys abilities. were like, we have to get Andrew on here to tell us the story and put our or put our yeah. listeners to sleep. All right, give me the last paragraph, Andrew. Skip to the ending here. While merino sheep were traditionally domesticated and bred in Spain, they originally hailed from the Atlas Mountains of Morocco. Flocks of wild sheep would normally have to endure rapidly changing conditions, ranging from negative 5 to 95 degrees Fahrenheit. Thus, they naturally developed a type of wool perfect for manufacturing outdoor fabrics. Cool in the summer and warm in the winter, merino wool fiber is a fraction of the width of human hair, giving the material a softer feel, and unlike traditional wool, it won't begin to weigh you down or smell when it gets wet. In fact, merino mimics the consistency of alpaca wool, so unlike traditional wool, Itchiness is rarely What's an, an issue. Alpaca? Is that like an alpaca? It's like a llama. Alpaca. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> it, that's how the Chileans <laughs> say it. Alpaca. Okay. I, I refer to alpaca your With crack, the accent. So that's or the whole not reason. like Tupac, though. The Tupac <laughs> of alpacas. That was. <laughs> alpaca. So at the end of the day, what does that mean for our customers? It means that we're finally able to offer a material that's not going to get soaked like cotton will. Um, won't uh, cool you down like cotton will. Um, if you've ever been outside running um, on a hot day, you will notice that cotton gets moist, will kind of stick to you a little bit. Yeah. Uh, merino wool, it won't do that. And it, if you're on a long camping trip, it won't smell up the tent. Uh, merino wool definitely absorbs perspiration a little less than your standard t-shirt. I can I can totally vouch that it does not cover my <laughs> Okay, well, most people <laughs> Whenever Dude, that, dude that's like three days of elk hunting stink, though. That's different. After, after four days, I was like, that's damn, different. I smell. It has its limits. It doesn't cover the scent. It just doesn't pick up the scent. Like, so the shirt doesn't smell. Be upwind from Buddy when hunting. Yeah. yeah. That is definitely not something I needed to do. I can tell you, it is good stuff, though. Like, mine got here right before yeah. my elk season to test it out. <laughs> and it... I loved mine. So everybody, we, we gave some to people to try out. Shannon, you tried yours? Yeah, I've gone running in mine. I'm wearing my underwear right now. Andrew. Oh, God. Andrew. Oh, my God. Oh, my Feeling good. <laughs> Olivia, you wore yours hunting? I did. I wore the um the long sleeve quarter zip one. I wore that as, like, my base, and then I just wore, like, I think it was a W sweatshirt and, like, a rain jacket over mm-hmm. it, and it was perfect. And then, uh, Jason, you got Yeah, I was using just the regular hunt. tee, because I usually run hot anyway, so I went with the short sleeve tee and the bottoms. And just a W hoodie over the top of it. And it was awesome. As far as not overheating. Yeah, so, Cause I'm one that gets yeah. really hot when I hike. I can't Absolutely. ever talk myself into wearing like thermal bottoms or, or any kind of bottom base layer. Just because if I do any kind of hiking, I am flat miserable. And these, I was really surprised, um, with that lighter weight Merino wool. Yeah. I went with the, so we decided to go with like 150, a lighter weight material so 150 gsm whichever that means i don't know maybe andrew grams per square out. meter what's that grams per Thank square you, meter Jesus. he knows he knows this stuff i did my wool research Can we okay play the clapping track <laughs> so 150 grams per square meter is the is the the weight that we went with which is a, a fairly lightweight version because i figured most houndsmen are kind of hiking and so we're real active and so when you put these on, you should be a little bit chilly when you first start out. And then as you hike, you kind of warm up to them, if mm-hmm. that makes sense. Um, you know, that, that's the best way to describe it is in the morning when you first start, you might feel a little bit cold. You know, this isn't like a, you're going to sit in a deer stand and, you know, negative 15 degree. This is not the stuff that you want for that, right? Or you need to layer the hell up. This is more for, it's cold. You're going to go out, you're going to hike. You're going to do some physical activity, you know, and, uh, you know, then you go back or whatever. If you have to sit a long time, I would recommend getting a thicker um, base layer. However, you can sure. run around in this stuff and then stop and then you won't catch a chill like you will with some other fabrics. Yeah. Yeah. Because whenever the with wool, it doesn't when it gets wet. So if you do perspire, start sweating, it, it keeps you warm even when it gets wet. So there was times during my season. I want to hear about Olivia's. Olivia, you killed a bull this year. I did. I did. I went out with my dad and I we got one uh, opening morning. I want to hear that story in a minute, okay. but I'm going to talk about my story first, <laughs> which did not. Involve, Your story is probably not as good did, as my no, story. No, it's not. It's not. I, at some point, I would go up there and we had a bunch of snow, so I'd be on snowshoes. 
in the rain on top of snow. So I'm getting wet on the outside and I'm sweating. Dying on the inside. <laughs> bullets? Yeah, sweating bullets. Good, good one, man. Anyways, I'm sweating bullets on the inside. So I'm getting wet from the inside and the outside at the same time. And uh, long story short, it keeps you warm when it gets wet. So I mean, I was completely soaking wet, tired, and and it felt to be, I, I did get into elk. I was like, it was pretty cool to be sitting there. I, uh, I, I get on these tracks, I hike up there and I hear this cow call and I'm like, oh, right there, there you are. So I'm up in their snowshoes and I look down, I try and take a snowshoe off, you know, thinking I can be quieter without a snowshoe because I'm like, plop, 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 you know, in the, in the snow. Well, I step into the snow and I land up in my crotch, you know, if so it goes all the way down to the crotch. I'm like, well, that's not going to work. So I'm going to try and reattach my snowshoe as I'm looking for a bull to pop out. Behind and Buddy's tree. legs are like and, seven uh, feet long anyway. <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> it was deep. I wouldn't tell you what. It was deep. And uh, anyways, it ended up being a cow and, and two calves. There was no bull with them. But I got my snowshoe back on, and they, they kind of stayed within about 25 yards, 20 yards of me. For a while, I got a video a little bit when I realized there wasn't a bull there. But the moral of the story was, well, before that, I felt like I was going to be like a badass shooting a bull on, on snowshoes. Like, I was like, this is going to be like Johnson, a cool yeah. story to be like, yeah, like, man, you know, like. When you when you lace up your snowshoes, it's like it's like four wheel drive. It's like we're gonna go for this thing, man. <laughs> Send it. Nobody like out here. Like when you wear your Crocs yeah, right. and put yeah, the strap around the drive. back, you four, put them in four wheel drive. Ninety nine percent of the elk hunters out there don't even know what a snowshoe looks like. You know what I mean? They've never seen a snowshoe. They probably never yep. put one on. And I'm up there because I because I cat hunt sometimes in the snow. I'm like I'm gonna put my snowshoes on and I'm gonna go hike up these elk and they were deep. Anyways. I didn't kill a bull, not in snowshoes and not without snowshoes, but I did get wet. I did use the Merino and, uh, did not get anyways. cold. So uh, not as cold. I got cold a little bit, but, but you know, I don't want to, I don't want to pretend like it was just like, it's magic. You know what I mean? Like when, when you do stop, it, it, it does work when it's wet. But like I said, these layers are a light layer. So you got to make sure that you're, you're picking the right layer for your activity. So if you're going to sit, like, so if I stopped and sit, so whenever I'm sitting there forever watching um, the elk, I don't want to say I was freezing, but it was definitely on the lower limit of my, my, uh, my attire. You know what I mean? By the time I got wet and, and there, so the Merino still worked, but it's a light layer of Merino. Cause all I had was the Merino and I put a, a rain jacket on. That's the only thing I was wearing. I didn't wear any other you know, thicker layer or anything like that. So um, I had a pack, you know, so I, I, I had a pack to, to dress up one more layer. You know, that, that's what guys need to realize, I guess. So anyways, what are you laughing about? I don't know. Andrew's looking down his shirt and I'm wondering I'm for, why. I forgot if I wore my Merino today or not. I'm wearing the long sleeve houndsman shirt, but I'm, I'm toasty. I'm wearing a, an orange pro staff here and I got my long johns on. Merino feeling, oh yeah. It's luxurious, <laughs> guys. I just got a space heater. <laughs> space heater. Well, I just yeah. complain and turn the temperature. I feel up like I've got a, a personal space the heater other going on. Portion we need to cover is the the bottoms. The yeah. Bottoms, yeah, they're a little different. Shannon refused. They are to not wear. to be worn by themselves, and they have a nice little flap in the front for yes, fellas. So, yeah, they're not so like a yoga pants. No, they're, they're not like, a yoga pants. No, yeah, ladies, don't no. please don't go around wearing them like yoga pants. You're gonna get some weird yeah, looks. Yeah, yeah, like. No. Yeah. An underlayer. Andrew's already tried. So he can speak from experience. Home. Is is something that's new for most people and was new for me is a boot cut uh bottom. So it, it doesn't go all the way down. It's, it it looks like a, it's like a capri. Like a capri. Say, like yoga pants or whatever. Yeah. yeah. Or gaucho. Yeah, I don't or... like that word. Just... You, you say capri <laughs> though and people start thinking. <laughs> well, it's another word, isn't it? Like Ballerina gaucho pants. is a thing. Yeah. I don't know. Trousers. Boot Pantaloons. Cut. They're boot different. Cut. Boot, boot cut bottom layers. So so they're made so that your socks go over top of them, but they don't go down to your ankles. You know what I mean? They, they you should be wearing a high sock with them, and and uh, most people are going to be like not like them until they get used to them. You know I was mean? that guy. And once you get used to them, I <laughs> yeah, I was too. I was like, I'm going to try these. And uh, anyways, I I do like them. You know what I mean? So they don't go all the way down. You don't have them bunching up underneath your socks, and they get in your boots and make it uncomfortable in your boots. So it stays. So that the layers underneath your boot are very minimal. It's just your socks. So that's one thing that's different. Um, also, that I want people to understand is, you know, when you get it, don't expect these things to go down to your ankles. If you actually have used boot cut before and you absolutely hate them and you don't want to go with a boot don't cut, buy don't, no. don't buy these ones because these are, these are a boot cut uh, thermal. They're made to uh, be worn with high socks. Cool. They have a little flap. So the other thing I want to talk about is the flap in the front. 
Okay. Ladies, yep. the is that flap. like a deal breaker for you? Why would it be? Not entirely. Yeah. It's just a little funky, you know? So what's the problem? It doesn't really, it doesn't really is have it a purpose a... for women. But I can see how, yeah. I don't know that it has yeah, a purpose for one. men either. That, so my question is, is like. I want to know if we're not getting too weird. Does it serve a purpose for anybody? Or is it just kind of I there mean... as an option? That's that's the part. Jason, I want I want to say something so one? bad, and I can't on Go this ahead, podcast. Man. <laughs> Look, I'm people to need to like... know what it looks like. If I have to take some photos and put them on the no, web, no, I'm not no, doing no, that. No. Oh my god, no, no, nobody no, no, wants that. that. My my question is is for the users, all the men out there, and women is the so when we make our next round, here's my question: Do we put that little flap in the front, or do we not? Like to me, no flap. Ooh, I know the girls are going to yeah. be like, no flap. I think well, flap. Talking. What's that? I vote flap. Do you, I no. don't want to. I vote there's a flap. I don't want to. I was going to ask a question it's and practical. I stopped myself immediately. Anyway, so here's the question. Here's the question for all our users out there. All of our users out there. Do If, if we made a pair of bottoms without the flap, is that going to That's offend them? Are they going to be like, man. oh my God, these things don't work. <laughs> you know, I don't know how to go to the bathroom with the without the flat is that that's my question for my the users right i don't know if we want to know the answer it's to this gonna question. be tougher do we really want people responding to this no for the next run they're they here so, directly to so you girls just gotta suck up you you girls live in a man's world and you just gotta you gotta i'm accept pretty the fact sure that there are more women world. here in the shop than hey, you know what <laughs> check this End out call. i'm gonna take five because I... go i'll go find out. Good. Up out so here's here's the big deal right like we're committed for this run. Like you guys, if if, if girls want to wear it, they've just got to wear it the way it is. It's not like we can, I mean, you could sew it closed or whatever, but I look at it and go, I never really, it doesn't matter to me if it's there or not there. You know what I mean? Like it, it really doesn't matter to me. It seems to matter to you guys because you guys were the first ones that told me about it. I'm like, ah, these are men's because it's got the flap. Well, yeah, because women's stuff doesn't so, have well, the that's flap. Stand, that's like easy deduction. Well, what are we right supposed there? to do with I mean, the flap? Like, like Put a snack. That's a standout. Feature. This is the big debate, though. This is what I'm talking about. There's a men versus women's debate, and I'm telling you, as as me as a man, I have never ever needed the flap. I don't use the flap. Period. I just, I think that's probably true for a majority of users. Um, Jason, are you a flap user? It or really you, depends. Not? I don't want to know okay. who uses the flap and who doesn't. <laughs> so like, do we put I the flap in because we're not in. making Here's the thing. women's? This is like down the yeah, rabbit hole. If we're going to decide to do them or not with the flap or without, I mean, we got to decide, are we, we going to be know. trendsetters or trend followers? Cause I've never seen a pair without them ever. At least I've never noticed. So I think, well, this is the deal for the women. You got to decide, is this a show? But, okay. Let me ask this. Are you going to buy them without, if they don't, if they have a flap, do we got to make men's and women's? That's my question. Even if they did not have the flap, you girls would not, like, those are still a base layer. I want to make that really clear. Like, to any women out there that are thinking of ordering this, these are not yoga pants. These are, like, a thin merino base layer. Like, you guys wouldn't go to Walmart just wearing these, would you? No. Okay. Absolutely not. I do not leave my house not wearing jeans. But oh, that's I just wear me. leggings a lot, but no, I would not wear these, like, out and about. I would still wear them under, but. Right. But they're not like a legging. Okay. No. But they are fashionable. No. Oh, Anyways, here's the deal. We need some feedback from people. Plus up on the flap or plus down on the flap. Does it matter? If you're a man, does it matter? If you're a woman, does it matter? Because we have to decide. This round's done. I mean, this is the way they are. But if that's something that could be changed, I just look at that and I go, man, I don't, I don't know the answer. You know what I mean? Either we say, Either we're not building for women because there's not enough demand to, to build the run. Like I, yeah. I, I can tell you how many we have to build that we're not going to make a women's cut and a men's right. cut. It's got to be one for both. So, so the question is, 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 can we do it one for both or not? So anyways, I think we've, buddy's beating a dead horse over here. He's got the picture. Yeah. See this. I got this little picture here. Can you see this picture? I, I can see it. Yes. Yeah, it's you. Yeah. Olivia made for me. Beating a dead horse. I did. Dan and Olivia, mm. they put a picture of me. And there's a guy. I signed it too, so you know when I it become famous, like you can camel. sell it. Funny story it's about camels. Horse. It's okay. a dead horse, and I'm later. I'm beating a dead horse. What's that? I'll tell my You're... camel story on a different episode. <laughs> yes, exactly. Um, okay, so we got that. If if there's a difference the next year, so when I reorder those pants, we need some feedback from. Customers. I want to hear back on the leg yeah. length too. 
if people like the three quarter, like the boot, mm-hmm. what do they call that? A boot cut? Yeah, browser. Or if they would prefer the long ones. Well, I'm just curious. Yeah, I, you got it. I think well, we should I, call them the. That's what I call them but... all my hunting trip. Well, because boot cut, you think like long boot cut jeans. Men but... don't own really? capris. Yep. Interesting. Boot See, crop. You, you women make things all really difficult. Like. Yeah. All these things that I don't even think about. Sorry. Let me let me dumb it down for the men's world <laughs> okay, out there. I, I just used the bathroom. Andrew, stop. Technical. Andrew, we're done with that. Okay. All right. I want to hear an elk story, Olivia. With, with, and, and, and let's let's romanticize the merino wool as an integral part of you killing a bull. Okay. Uh, let me let me settle in here. I would crack a cold one, but I am both underage and I am at work. So let's, let's begin. So let's just, it's six o'clock in the morning. I'm dead ass tired. I slept in a wall tent, you know, I wake up and I'm like, you know what? I'm going to wear my Merino wool. I'm going to put it to the test. They call me noodle arms around here. Cause I'm, a, I'm a twig. I'm built like a twig. <laughs> So I get cold easily. I'm always yeah. cold. So um, I wore the three quarters at the long sleeve. I did not wear the capri pants because um, Buddy didn't give me any. No, no. no. <laughs> um, so, yeah. So I ended up wearing, you know, the, the long sleeve and then I wore my W sweatshirt. Was it because I didn't give you any or were you were offended by the look of them? I took one look and I said, no, no, I'm just kidding. I don't know. I just didn't grab okay. a pair. Um, so, you know, I wore my, my Merino long sleeve and then like my cotton sweatshirt over the top and like a little raincoat. Cause it was, it was kind of drizzly that day. And it's, um, you know, sitting in the truck, I was cold cause my dad will not turn on the heat. You know, he's an old you don't man. Don't fog anything up, man. Um, no no likes, fog lenses on them. Scopes. No, he wants me to freeze. No, absolutely not. We're rolling around in the Dodge. The windows are down. I'm freezing. He's just living his best life. Um, so, you know, we're driving around in an undisclosed location somewhere in western Washington, as you do. Um, and we end up coming into some snow. It's probably, probably about a half inch, inch of snow on the ground, you know, not very much. And, um, you know, we're driving up this road and, you know, my dad sees these trucks or these tracks um, out of the truck. So, well, let me back up. So he makes me get out of the truck and walk sh- around. I'm gonna, I want to like shorten your story down like Andrew. I'll be like, hey, okay, can you, can you speed it up a little bit? I'm, ra- I'm reeling it back <laughs> in. I'm reeling it back in. So he's, he's like, get out and walk around. Let me see what these tracks, what your tracks look like, see if they're fresh or not. Anyways, blah, blah, blah. We go back and forth. He's like, what do you want to do? I'm like, do I look like I know what I want to do? This is opening morning. I've never been hunting before, like seriously. Like I got my whole outfit on. I'm just excited to be there, right? Yeah. So we end up, um, you know, following these tracks and stuff. And it's just all up and down on the hillside. Up these here, down tracks. here, around the corner. And you're paying attention. Okay. And you're, yeah. Elk and tracks. You're like... And I'm in La La Land. But that's not the part of the story we're going to get to. But like the, part the Marino. Too, She's like. And I was not paying attention. That's and the world like, that she day lives day in. Day. I'll get to that. I'll get to that. Don't ruin my story. Okay. But no, the merino was like perfect. Like the whole time I stayed at like a perfect temperature, like not too warm. Um, while I was moving, I didn't get cold, you know. So it was once you start moving, you really like it retains the heat well. Um, but I never got overheated, which was nice. And it was, you know, I was moving around quite a bit. So. We're walking around, we go through this clear cut, we drop down into the timber. There's like patches of snow here and there, you know, not, it's hard to track them. And here I am, I'm looking at the ground. I'm just thinking like, don't point your gun at your dad. Look at the trees. There's snow on the ground. Oh, the snow is so pretty. Just (laughs) not paying attention, literally not paying attention at all. And my dad's like, oh, there's a cow in front of us. And well, he says it was a hundred yards away. I don't really know. I have no concept of like distance whatsoever. Um, But so we're just looking and we're both looking at this cow and then look to the right a little bit. And there was my bull standing there. So, you know, got ready and took the shot and then he, you know, well, I don't know how much I'm allowed to say because it was he kind of flopped around and it was gross. <laughs> and then there was one part of the story where half of a donut may have tried to make a reappearance, but we can leave that out. <laughs> Her dad was dressing it and she's like, couldn't like, take it, huh? What would she say? She goes, well, she's like, it was so gross, but I couldn't it's look like away. It's like a train wreck, right? <laughs> yeah, it was a train wreck. Well, it w- yeah, it was. And it's like, yeah, it's, he was like, he was getting in there and there was just, blood everywhere and it's like soup in there and the elk is like dead but it's like hacking up this blood and i was like oh man 
my old fashioned donut is gonna come back up. It didn't. Just well, for just the record, so you know, your story is better than Anyways. either mine or Buddy's or Mike's because none of us yeah. got a bull. <laughs> yeah, we didn't kill one this year. But no, I, I felt pretty pretty darn lucky to be able to go and you know experience that with my dad. You know, one so. day of hunting. But yeah, no, one the marina was one great. Morning. Opening, Opening morning, morning, we take, killed take him at ten thirty. Dad in the snow. Just Pretty much. It's probably kicking it was rocks. a beautiful He's day. Probably kicking kicking rocks, can down your dad's road. probably thinking, could you be a little more freaking quiet? <laughs> you know? Probably. Just do to do, you know, tromping through the yeah. woods. Yeah, no. hey, you want to see the picture? You can look at my Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> Shannon will link that below. Yeah. No. <laughs> what did you kill? A, well, how big was it? Ginormous. Uh, oh my God. I don't remember. How many points? Oh, damn. I don't remember. Oh Hold on. God. Let me count up. Maybe I. When I tell you that I don't do this, do you realize this is a big deal, right? Your first one, elk, two, like this is like usually four, your the four by five, three by four. Three by four. Here, That's you guys can. Nice there bowl. he is. All right, good job. Thank you. I think it was all the merino that did it. Must it. have been. Well, what happened to you guys then? Oh wow, <laughs> That's brutal. Burn. You know, <laughs> even Jeff is in the back laughing. I, I can't even <laughs> reply to that. That was horrible. Know, that's no, it, mean. I'm out know, of here. I'm sorry. leaving. Good no, you know what it was? They were wearing the pants and Olivia. Yeah, was we it. wore the pants. That's what the problem was. We had the flap. Yeah, the, it was the, doing. Yeah, they wore the dorky capris. No, it wasn't even the door. It wasn't even the pants. It was we put that stupid little flap yep. in the front. You know that's what, what really I was. tried was the reputation <laughs> for a cover oh. scent. That might have been it. You oh God! Know. It smelled like pine trees. I don't know about man's yeah, world, Shannon. I think this is a woman's world now. So. Congratulations on your first elk, your first bull. Thank you. That's uh, that's actually not an easy feat, to be honest with you, man. There's a lot of people that go a lot of years without killing an elk. <laughs> this guy has <laughs> been several <laughs> years. Yeah, I haven't killed him for a couple of years for sure. Um, anyways, so that's a pretty cool thing. You're gonna bring in some Thank sausage, you. or would you would you do with um, it? Um, uh, well, we cut it up this past weekend, so you did not yeah. burger the back strap, right? Because that's when I lose my. No, of course. We actually ate some of the backstrap last night. Um, pan fried it with a little bit of flour. We had mashed potatoes, green bean casserole, mm. mac and cheese. Yeah, I seen your mom. Your mom's Facebook post. <laughs> My mom's trying to pimp me out a little bit. <laughs> She's like a She's little proud. Yeah. She's a little Can you out say there. Pimp on the radio. Olivia said worse. Yeah. Shut up, Andrew. I forget that you're here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Your mom's funny. I get her Facebook messages there. It's like, oh my daughter, Didn't Olivia. Didn't she like friend request you? Yeah. Like. The yeah. first week I started working. Yeah, yeah. Here. I could have a shop mom party. We could get Andrew's yeah. mom over here and get your mom. Yeah, you'd like Andrew's that, wouldn't you? Would bring us your mom's super stuff. nice. Your mom and she bring and bring treats, so. That's true. She does. She's good at it. Yeah. My mom says I live Not too derailed. far now. Anyways, yeah, you live too far. You know, Twenty minutes is too far. I don't, <laughs> yeah, no. Um, we were. I I met your mom. We were over uh, having dinner at a restaurant. Me and Laura, which we don't go out too often, but. Oh yeah, she told me about that. Your mom like, kept looking mom? at me, and I'm like, I don't know who that is. You know what I mean? And but your dad was wearing a W hat, and I'm like, got it. Oh yeah. Anyways, they come over and introduce her. The nice family, Olivia. You come from a good, <laughs> good <family>. stock. <laughs> they like. They That's like what you, you. think. They no. love you, man. <laughs> your dad puts up your shit, kicking rocks behind you to go kill a bull. Yeah, right. Uh. Anyways, so the merino wool. Uh, what are we selling that for? Uh, shirts are forty nine ninety nine. That's for the short sleeves, and then both the bottoms and the uh, long sleeve, the quarter zip tops are seventy four ninety nine. Yeah, and if you've never tried it, so there's a lot of so there's a lot of good options out there for for good base layers. If you're still like a cotton guy, I highly recommend you give it a shot, man. Give give a merino base layer a shot for when you're hiking and, and hunting and mm -hmm. in the swamp or wherever, because it's amazingly different as far as, yes, it still gets wet like cotton, but it keeps you warm and it dries out faster than, than cotton. So it keeps working when you're wet. So that's, that's one of the major differences between that and like cotton. And super comfy. Stuff. I will comfy. say when I, I got the regular tea, not the quarter zip. And I put it on, and my wife will attest to this. I said, wow, that's really nice. Like, super comfortable to wear. Probably mm -hmm. the most comfortable mm -hmm. t-shirt I've ever put on. That's no BS. Like, dead serious. Extremely yeah. comfortable to wear. 
I was going to say, Trevor wears his, like, every day. I would wear that shirt every he probably day. Hasn't like, I will yet. be buying yeah, more. Yeah, it's a comfy shirt I they have. are extremely yeah. comfortable. And like I said, I'm hot-blooded. So I can work in it, and it's just enough to, like, I don't know, long sleeves I get overheated in. So I thought it was a really, really good option for the guys that don't like to get hot. It's, it's a good option. At the same time, I run cold, and I find it very comfortable as well. Like, I stay toasty all day, and I'm, I'm almost See? always chilly. It's like a moderator. Yeah. Hmm? Yeah, it, it's hot mm-hmm. and cold. Shannon, do we got the ability to put designs on the Merino shirt? Yes. Yeah. If you go into the actual, um, like, the different customizable shirt options, not the Merino yet, but if you go into, like, the different shirt ones, mm-hmm. uh, the Merino is an option in there. It's still the uh, forty nine ninety nine for those shirts and everything, but you can get a, you know, a design added on to your choice. Yeah, so if you want a t-shirt, um, there's two ways of buying the merino wool. One is to buy it just the merino wool, and you get it blank. And, and we can definitely get a, a design printed on that, too. We're going to try to get that set up so that we have a couple mm-hmm. designs on there that you can have it blank or or throw a design on there. The other way is to go into, like, a design and look at the different shirts that you can pick, and we have the merino option to be printed on. And so we did a couple test trials, and, and, and definitely we can print a design on those. Yeah, no, it looks those. good. So, yeah. The other, and we should have said this way early because we probably Lots. lost people already. <laughs> a lot of people. Um, like we got two people <laughs> left, and hopefully they got kids. Right? <laughs> like oh yeah, like still listening to this shit. <laughs> we we built these from extra extra small, which fit the yep. kids, and and so all the way to like three XL, I think. So, but the real critical part is, is we kind of hit those early kids. Um, so my kids are 10 and 12 and the extra, extra small fits my girl at 10 and extra small fits my boy at 12. Um, so those young kids, this is one thing that I always felt guilty about was I'd have all this cool gear. I got like a couple hundred dollars worth of gear. Right. And, and you go to the Walmart to get, get your, you know, the only thing you can find for your kids are like Walmart crap, right? you know, bottoms and tops. And so you're like, damn, I got all this good shit and you can't find gear for kids. So, so these, um, Merino wools, we tried to, to, to broaden the, the size to really pick up those small kids, not super small kids. You know what like I mean? My like my kid's you know, pretty eight, small. He's the, not even six yet. And he's a pretty slender kid, but the extra, extra small, I mean, it ran slightly mm-hmm. large on him, but I was really surprised at how, how far down it fit. That extra, extra small, I would say anybody between uh, the eight-year-old mark for sure, but like my kid's six and it fits. Yeah, right. So that eight-year-old, you know, 10-year-old, like I said, it kind of depends on on, uh, what we have, but I extra, extra small will fit the kids and and that's something that I don't think is out there very much for kids. And so that's something we're trying. It's new. Uh, My kids seem to really like it. My daughter wasn't really impressed with the pants. So Shannon, you'd probably get a yeah. mark on that one. But um, oh, well, she'll have to suck it up. She lives in a man's no. world. No. All right. <laughs> I, I know that heating and, and washing the, the things, I've seen the shirts kind of shrink a little bit. But they, I just you can stretch them back out. You can kind of work the, the shrinkage back out. So it tightens everything up. So if you get one of these shirts and, and you wash it and then you look at it, and it's like, oh, shit, it shrank. What I would do is, is is roll it up one way and kind of just pull it and kind of stretch stretch the fabric, loosen it back up, and then work it the other way. And once it gets broken in, you should be good. So I don't know if anybody – we've been doing some tests. We had we had one one guy that washed his, and he's like, man, it shrunk a ton. And so we've had everybody be washing them, washing them differently, hang drying yeah. them, doing different Usually things. Usually hang drying is better. I've seen mine shrink a little bit. Yeah, I've seen mine shrink just a little bit. But like I said, the material, the the weave or whatever it is, if you just get a little bit wet, you can kind of pull it back out and get the length back out of it. And it doesn't look like it's been stretched or anything. So so like I said, this, this one thing that with this wool, it kind of, we're, we're, I haven't seen that with the pants. I haven't seen that with the long sleeve. It's only been the short sleeve that I've seen any issue with maybe a little bit of shrinkage on the length. Yeah, but, definitely um, not doing like an air dry cycle is better like actually hang drying it just because then if you're hanging it or whatever else like the weight of it it isn't being like tossed together um versus it's just kind of you know sitting there in its position yeah perfect so 
W Merino wool is available now. We finally got it. We got another shipment coming in. So we got a, a small shipment that we got in now. And then we're supposed to get a second shipment, uh, hopefully soon. But we'll see how long everything takes to get over here. Um, but yeah, ready to go. Jason's tried it. Olivia's tried it. Shannon, you said you ran in yours? Yeah, overachiever. Was it hot? <laughs> No, it was good. And thankfully it was not the day that I like ate shit on the ground with the dogs. So I did not like tear a hole in it or anything. Did you have dinner together or what? Huh? (laughs) Did you have dinner together or what? No, no. (laughs) Oh, the other kind. Oh, gross. No, I like stubbed my toe into part of the concrete and then got drug across the ground on the sidewalk. And some poor kid was staring at me. I did mess up my my Garmin Delta though. So Mm. the whole thing's like all scuffed up and everything but no you're talking to somebody who tumbles down a mountain like every somebody other somebody take away <laughs> andrew's <laughs> microphone because i forget he's there hey he's i've been weird. there i've been there <laughs> me too but no it was good it was mm-hmm. especially the quarter zip it was nice because like you can kind of like let a little bit of air in you're not totally or yeah a or a lot for <laughs> sure <laughs> you're just down to my belly button there's been many a times up there hunting those i don't <laughs> My, my Kuyu jacket was down and my, my Rivers West was down mm-hmm. open. That was way venting. I was like, man, we're letting some serious air like flow in. But yeah. Fabio of the woods. Nobody was there to witness it. I'm just, you just have no, to it was imagine good. it. But it was Is that how you say that? Kuyu? Kiwi? Kiwi? <laughs> Kuyu. No. Kuyu. How do you say that? The the little camo Kuyu? thing. Kuyu. Kuyu? Kuyu? No. I thought it was no, Kiwi. Kiwi is a, <laughs> yeah. a fruit. Kiwi. It's Kuyu. And a bird. Q-y- Hit them Q-y- up for an advertising. Q-y- Come on. We just said their name this like a hundred times, whether it was right or wrong. <laughs> a bunch of times, Olivia. Yeah. Gonna have, I was just saying one time. Sorry. I use them for my a lot of my rain gear. I I like their gear. Until we bring on W right here. Um, yeah. <laughs> then you kick it to yeah. the curb. Then... Strike that from the vocabulary. We can't even We're gonna say edit it. This out. Will we no, though? And, Will we? And there's one thing I want to say is there is plenty of merino wool options like I, I will say i mentioned kuyu i'm gonna mention first light i was wearing first light elk hunting too like i would s- cycle through i have a, a first light lightweight i have a first light heavyweight so when i was sitting i was using a heavyweight merino you know because basically i'm not we're, we're probably not gonna make it i wanted a thicker version so i had a a real heavy merino wool from first light um we are not gonna be like the experts on merino wool i i i I don't see us being like we're gonna have one of everything what i do want is a good base layer for most of our customers and to cover most of the hunting that our customers do is is what we're targeting you know what i mean so active if you're if you're sitting in a tree stand if you're doing a lot of work i mean i highly recommend you look and see and one piece may not just cut it so anyway so that's one thing i do want to cover is like man if if you're if if you're like a first light guy if you're a you know kuyu guy or whatever i'm we're not doing this to compete with with other companies we're doing this to to bring a product to our customers that our customers will enjoy so um anyways i don't know everybody's doing the wave i don't know i (laughs) I wanted to do it across the screen because we're all connected but i think we're all connected in different ways so it would have looked really messed up (laughs) (laughs) all right uh jason (laughs) you got anything buy some merino kill a bull yeah just not the pants right yeah yeah and and well, again, I mean, jury's out on the, the pants. pants. Let out. us know what you think. We need your input. You got to Try, tell yeah. us. Like we, we need a without getting into too much detail. Like you know, you please just like, don't tell us what you like about it. Is the it. flap a, a big simple deal? Yes or no. Like, is the flap a big deal? If you're uh, okay. apparently Shannon was like the flap's a big deal nope. for me. She didn't like Not it. Wear it. Blast. Guys, don't let him get away with this. Team flap. Hashtag team flap. Yeah, Andrew, you're in the minority, I think. Maybe the rest you of us Jason. are team you're no flap. <laughs> Turn off his mic. So if you're... I haven't tried the flap. I don't know. I'm leaning towards no. Somebody wrap That's this thing up. up. <laughs> <laughs> Can this we be a, done? Land the this plane. This is not a question for the women. Like The only question for the women is... This isn't a question for the women. The only the only <laughs> question for the women is if you're like Shannon breaker? and they're like, I will not wear those pants. Hard no, have a like deal breaker. That was a hard no from Shannon. She was like, nope, I'm nope. not wearing those. So that, that was a hard no. And so I'm sure there's other, I, I mean, I can't imagine Shannon's the only person like that. So I'm guessing there's other females 
out there that that's a hard no. They see that and they're like, hell no, I'm never wearing anything like that. You take my flag away, I'm done. There could be that's guys the who problem. are just like total hard that's, no. That's the problem, right? We have a couple hard no's. Now, I don't really care, Shannon, if you wear them or not. I'm going to be like honest with you. But, but I can tell you from my own personal experience, it's not a, if, if, if I seen a pair of pants without the flap, right? So this is the thing. Shannon sees a pair with the flap and it's a hard no for Shannon. If I seen a pair without the flap, it's still not a hard no. It's like, oh, I don't even check to be like, hey, I got to make sure these things have a flap. Like I don't check my underwear to make sure they have the flap. I don't give a damn. Right. A That's because oh every God. pair so, has one. <laughs> <laughs> I know, but, but you're going to miss the make flap. Our next one. I want to know from other dudes. I want to know. Are you a hard no if it doesn't have a flap? Period. If, if you're like, no, no, my pants better have the damn flap. You're going to want the flap in the field. It's a tactical thing. <laughs> and uh, cut. No, no, <laughs> no, no we're done. <laughs> All right. We're going to have to cut Andrew out of this. But anyways, we'll wrap this up. I just muted Andrew. <laughs> <laughs> to take Andrew's his gone. Away he wants to go to the gutter. Um, you know, <laughs> go from there. But on the next order, that's a decision that we got to come up with. And I'd like some input on that. All joking aside. You know what I mean? I would definitely like some input. So when we redo our pants, we either do them the same way, which is fine. And Shannon will never have a pair of W bottoms. We'll just bring back yoga pants. going to have to live in. That can happen. You yep. just have to bring back yoga pants and be like, okay, well, that's pants. whatever. Or we piss some dudes off like Andrew that are like, you don't have flap. Flap. I'm not buying it. So hey, <laughs> get the dog barking. It's All right, guys, let's wrap this up. I think I, got a, I brought dogs to work today because they've been driving me, driving us nuts. So I've been trying to separate them. their distraction yeah but then you take no. them out i'm gonna take them out here probably tomorrow all right jason yep are we missing anything uh, i honestly don't know after that i i do not know that was a lot in a lot of different directions and a lot of flaps merino wool yeah yeah just check merino. out the merino wool it's not gonna break the bank i'll be honest like if you're really really questioning like if you're gonna like it or not that t-shirt just because of the cost and the price point on it Really good item to try because it yep. is extremely comfortable. It performs well in the field. It performs well sitting around here at the house. It's just a really good way for you to try it before you make a bigger investment, I think. All right. Somebody last hang thing. this thing up. We're last rambling. thing, last thing. No, you just told me to wrap it up. And now you're going to no, open no, it back no. up. This is last thing. Check out our podcast next week. It's going to actually be Wednesday. It'll be a quick little tech tip and everything. Kind of a tech tip, but it's all on Black Friday deals. So check it out. Look for those deals. Hear what it's all oh, about. So this is going to be like this There's Friday. Be yeah, this, ones. this Friday. I don't have oh. anything for Friday. All right. What do we do now. Don't we tell don't the people tell that. The people you got to block that. them. Take it to you. Got, make you it. got plenty. I got everything. You got plenty. <laughs> We're so booked <laughs> and out. And that's all a right. wrap. Right. <laughs> Team Flap. <laughs>